Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're reviewing The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. And I got to say, out of the gate, it's awesome. I'm loving Love it. How about you guys? Love it. I think it's great. I think, yeah. I mean, overall, it's a, a story about a character that we don't know in the Star Wars universe. Yep. It's something that we've been wanting to see. Yeah. The fact that they picked... To, to make it a Mandalorian is fantastic because of the, you know, all of the love that went out for Boba Fett. Um, I just think it was a great decision to pick that mm -hmm. kind of character. And man, like even with a show that didn't have that much of a through line for, as far as the story goes, you know, it was like the Wild West. It's totally a Western. Yeah, it's 100% a Western. Yeah, going from town to town. You yeah. know, there's people that are down on their luck. There's, you know, he's got a kind of a thing that he's following, but there isn't really... Anything happening until the end of the season when you realize, oh wow, something yeah. something big right. is going on. Which it really is great. it really is a western. Somebody actually took the the opening and made it into a spaghetti western. Yes, mm. which to, which it was so apropos. It was, it was fantastic. But yeah, this this series does what we have wanted for so many years. It's breaking new ground, but we still have tons of nostalgia and and throwbacks and callbacks all over the place. If you if you look close enough, yeah. I mean, it's so it's so much fun. I'm really loving it on so many levels. I mean, where do we, where do we you want to even start? Well, let's uh, start they, they, with let's talk about like the complexity of what this show brings because the lead character you can't see his face. Mm -hmm. So when I first heard about the Mandalorian, I'm like, how are they going to handle the helmet? Because I knew the lore that they really are they're supposed to keep their their identity a secret. How are they going to handle that? And it, it turned out to be so much better than I thought. Yeah, you know the the voice acting. In a sense, you know, of course, there's a physical, physical yeah. physicality to the character as well. But his voice acting is so good that you do feel emotion coming from a character. Now, let's let's face it. The Mandalorian, that character, Mando, is kind of low on emotion. You know, he's not like this super expressive type of guy. Yeah. And that's really hard to pull off. It's really challenging to pull off a very unemotional character. Like Spock is always what we talk about. Right. So many people have tried and failed to portray Vulcans because you come off as being flat. Mm -hmm. So you need to be on this you know, brooding, very you know, low emotion character without being flat. And he right. totally pulls it off. And again, it's almost a joke in the show that like, he'll look at a character and somebody, the character said, like, don't look at me that way. Like, he's uh, <laughs> having this effect on the other people in the show yeah. where he's emoting through the helmet. Mm -hmm. And it totally works. If that didn't work, I don't think the show would have been good. You the, know? the casting is perfect. Yeah. Um, now, you know who the actor is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's the guy. <laughs> from Game of Thrones. He's the, he's the guy that fought the mountain in Game yeah. of Thrones. And totally and, blew it. And he <laughs> had him. He had him. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny is I can't help but think about that other character that the actor played. You know, but the bottom. Very different. Very different. Oh, completely. I, I love the Mandalorian lore. Um, I, I wasn't mm -hmm. one of those people that got into Boba Fett. Like, I like Boba Fett. I thought he was cool. And I li loved that he was a bounty hunter. And, you know, and then it went off the rails, really, with um, in a good way in the extended universe with the books yeah. and everything. But, but also the cartoons. I mean, the, the, yeah. the Star Wars Rebels, they really get into the Mandalorian part of the plot. And it's great. It's an, it, Again, it's, it is a good background plot of the Star Wars universe that they're really leveraging extremely well in the Mandalorian. And I'm more into Mandalorian lore and the society that they have now than I ever was. Like, oh I yeah, I knew so little hooked. about yeah. it. I barely even knew what Mandalorian really was until this thing came around. Because I, I didn't read any of the books or see some of the extended stuff. But um, the two things in this, in this first season totally su sucked me in what? so hard. Two things. All right, early on, there's a robot. Yeah. There's this robot. Yeah, there's this robot. <laughs> yeah. And my, my egg's big, bigger than your egg, Jay, by yeah. the way. Um, this, so the robot shows up, and instantly I'm like, oh, shit, this is going to be the sidekick to Mando. Yeah. Mando's sidekick. And, to, and when you see his entrance, he's shooting because he's got centers everywhere. He's shooting in every direction. He's an amazing assassin. Yep. So this, if you don't know, this is, this is Ig-11 from, from Mandalorian. Um, we first saw this guy in Empire Strikes Back. Remember when Darth was... At, was had a whole room full of yes. bounty hunters, of yeah. course, right? And you see this guy in the background. And everyone's like, whoa, look at that, a robot bounty hunter. How awesome is that? So mm -hmm. everybody, everyone fell in love with him then. And then since then, they've, they've kind of built him up and you can learn more about the background of, of that IG-88. Mm -hmm. And so this is IG-11 from in Mandalorian. And I was just fell in love with this guy so much because I think it would, and still think that he would make a fantastic sidekick to Mando. I just... Yeah, but Bob, you must have missed the point 
that Mando hates droids. Yes, yes. okay. He and hates at, at first I was really pissed off at him for hating droids because how do you hate droids? But then I didn't realize that that was part of his whole oh, arc, yeah. which then comes to fruition uh, at the end of the season when he comes back because yeah. uh, the, the Nick Nolte alien like totally refurbished him, wiped him out. So he's got not a, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body, but he's yeah. still a, a super like nurse protector. And um, well, I remember we, we watched that episode together and Bob uh, was literally in mourning when, yeah. he, when the robot was killed at the end. Dear, I really thought, because it was two episodes, he was in two episodes, and I really thought they were setting it up to be the sidekick that, I, too. that I wanted. He had a noble ending. He had a fantastic yeah, really ending. Cool. And, yeah. and, and I loved it so much, but I still have hopes that another egg is going to come back. All right, what's number so two? So the other thing, Baby Yoda. Hey, Baby Yoda. Yoda. How? How? Baby Yoda how, how is a phenomenon. How did they do this? Right. It's how a did they pull it off? Phenomena. First off, they pulled it off this way. <laughs> that by making a really good decision, they went with a puppet and not CGI. Mm -hmm. Huge decision, I think. A the CGI would have looked okay. It would have looked pretty good even. But something, a tangible 3D yeah. tactile puppet, having that there, I think, really helps sell it. Really, because there's nothing like, even today, there's nothing like having a real practical effect right there. Still, um, you can't really beat that. But wait, so, Bob, can we talk about how risky this decision was? I mean, look, I get I, it. Like, if I if I was one of the people sitting on the boardroom going, all right, let me see your character concepts. What, what, you want to put this little, this is like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy-Doo. Remember that? Like, <laughs> Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you really want to put this thing in the show, the Mandalorian, he's a badass and he's going to be carrying around. You know, it doesn't sound good on paper. But Maybe, I guess. the moment I saw him, I'm like, wow, that thing is like preternaturally cute. It, yeah, of course, it's got everything. It's got the big eyes, uh, the, the way you know, the way the shape of the head. And but to me, when I first took a really good look at him, his mouth is like an inverted U. It's like an upside, which is like a frown. Like, yeah. Wait, how do you make that cute? And they pull it off. Yeah, they pull off this perpetual frown. I think the, as, fa the fact that he doesn't talk enhances the yes, effect. Yes, that's true because that, yeah, because I think you would, you'd be pulled out because yeah. I don't think it'd be hard course, to, to sell yeah, that. Yeah, so, work. But so, it's also just that you get to project onto him a lot, you know, because exactly. the character which is, is what, talking. Which is what humans do very, yeah. very well. So I think, I'm hoping, I really hope that somebody in the Star Wars company, or Disney, I mean, got fired because somebody screwed up big. That, there was no Baby Yoda for sale for Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have bought at least two of them. Yeah. I was looking like, are you kidding? So, they didn't have the foresight to say, wait a second, this is going to be in demand. Because they're all about that. You know, well, right? they, they have the toys how before they drop Yeah, the you're right. You're yeah. right. I mean, you know what, Bob? But whatever. It's a, it's a giant machine. And wherever these decisions happen. Look, I'll be honest with you. Me and my wife have two on pre-order right now. Let's talk about this character outside of how cute he is. Because he is adorable. But that it works in, in the plot of this show. You know, first of all... It's a Yoda. It's, a, it's, a, it's the race that Yoda yeah. was, right? right? Guys, don't forget. Yaddle. Yaddle was in I episode know. one. Yaddle was the female, uh, you know, right. Yoda, species. Yoda species. And I, I can't, I don't think there is a name for the species, oddly enough. There has to be. I'll have to go on Wikipedia. Not in the movies, but it could be in some, in the yeah. broader canon somewhere. Yeah. This character is not really his sidekick either. He is becoming emotionally attached to this mm -hmm. character. So you're getting like this familial bond between the two oh, of yeah. them. And the fact that he can use the force and he uses, the, he's using the force instinctively. Mm -hmm. And it, right. there's all these interesting questions that start popping up. Like, is right. this species adept at the Force? Yeah. Or And who's his parents? Yeah. Who, where did he come from? Why did the bad guys want him? Like, it must be because That's he's a remember, He's 50 years old. Yeah. He's 50 years old. Yeah. He could literally be Yoda's child. We yeah. don't know that. Yeah. I mean, I mean it seems unlikely because Yoda was 800 years. But yeah. We don't know what the life cycle is of that species. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we don't, we don't you know, have any details. He so, could have got busy on Dagobah. Good plots and good characters provoke more questions than the answer. Exactly, right? and that's what that's what Baby Yoda mm -hmm. does. But he, you know when the, the Baby Yoda turns takes the knob off of the yeah. thing, and, yeah. and then there's that interplay between the two of them. I mean, just writing that, I was thinking. I like to think outside when I'm, I'm watching the show. I'm like, somebody had to write that. Like, and the fact that it worked. Again, it's one of those scenes where it's like endearing. Like he takes the knob and then the knob was missing. And then you could tell even with the out of actor's face yes. there, just the way he turns and looks, you could tell that he's yeah. falling in love with that little yeah, guy. Yeah. So I, I, I totally applaud them for having the nerve to do it, to creating such a, a really like cool, interesting, neat, little baby character that, that plays with the, the Mandalorian, with a, a, a freaking bounty hunter. Yeah. So a lot of things work in this series, right? First of all... Sure. It's. I thought I liked the the longer format of TV over the movies. Oh God, mm -hmm. yes. I, and I, I, in fact, all of my favorite Star Wars storytelling has been on the TV versions, yep. the cartoons, and now, The Mandalorian is the first live action. And I can one. only I can only surmise 
that the TV shows are less controlled than the movies. Yeah. Because they, you know, they don't cost as much and they're, you know, they, they probably don't take it as serious. I don't know. I'm just... But I like that. Out. I like that it isn't trying to overwhelm me with yeah. production value. No, you know what I mean? I don't need, we don't need that. Tell we want a story. We want good characters. storytelling. We want good story. characters. And I think they were. They have. It feels like they have the freedom to um, to to explore that more. Mm-hmm. To like to emphasize good storytelling and characters. They're not trying to wow us. Well, it's a big uh, flip flop, right? Because we're, because years ago it would be like the A the A celebrities would be the movie stars, and the, and the B and C celebrities were on TV, yeah. and it's really it's kind of flipped a little bit. Yeah. Where yeah. The, yeah. this long format storytelling, people are really finally realizing that this is really the way to do it. I mean, how many stories that you love, say you know, like say even Harry Potter or Asimov's Foundation or um, Game of Thrones, where you're like, I, I want to have it. A, you can't do this in two in yeah. two or three, even a trilogy. No. You need ten to twenty hours. Yeah, to, Dune is a good do, example. Do of when justice. you try to do a book and a movie and it didn't no. work. Yep. Totally felt because of the duration. Even, even to this day, I, I I think in the future we will see a Harry Potter series on TV that's like 10, 20 episodes long or or even longer. I would bet to, you to right really now do it, justice. They're, they're already probably in pre production. Wait, I also want to bring this up before I forget it. This is very important. I, I love paying attention to Things like the lighting and the sound and the, the set design, you know, how immersive are the environments that they're making? And they're doing an excellent job on this show, but they're, they're doing even better than an excellent job. I'm noticing objects that they put in this show that I already have in my head. I'll give you a perfect example. Like the trash compactor scene. You know, Luke, Leia, and Han are in the, yeah. the trash compactor scene. And there was that big pole that they were trying yeah. to erase. That pole was in the show. Yeah. It was in the background, just leaning against the building. There's lots of Easter eggs yeah. oh my for God. Star Wars fans, which is great, without hitting you over the head with it. You know what right. I mean? I hate it when I feel like, oh, my God, just, this is all just, you know, just for the fans, just a throwback. It's a gratuitous. Yeah. But if it just fills the background, or if it, like, weaves in nicely, like, one of the characters is making fun of another character by mimicking a Gungan, right? Yeah, and yeah. That, so that's yes. a great little, like, of course they would have no respect for the Gungan, and yeah. that it would be a joke of the galaxy. Right. And of course they're playing off the fact that the, they know the fans think yes. that the, the species is a joke, but of course the characters in the show think they're a joke. Another yeah. great example early on in, in the season, Salacious B. Crumb, that annoying yeah, little yeah. alien from A Return of the Jedi. Um, uh, you see one on a spit. Yeah. And, yeah, and another I one in a that. cage, like yeah. I couldn't believe very that. Very depressed because yeah. it's going to be eaten. That was great. Yeah. That was those little touches are well, wonderful. It is. It's it's important to do this. You know what what I was seeing in the movies is they keep doing this thing where they keep coming up with new races and new races and new races. But you you also want to repeat rate. Right? You want yeah. to see races that you're familiar with because that's part of the universe. And they did it in episode one of the Mandalorian when he hails at the the taxis on that ice planet in the very beginning, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. The creature that was there was the one that told on Luke and Han when they were going yeah. to the spaceport. Yeah, yeah. He's the, the guy. The cucumber guy. The yes. cucumber guy. Yeah. He's the guy that went to the uh, yeah. the stormtroopers and told on. So, you know, it's like you don't even need it to be a primary character, but like, yep, there's a character I, I recognize. So whoever whoever's doing the RD in that in that show is really being mindful of where they want it to be placed. And I'm telling you, man, it is so placed in the original three Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. It's so coming from that that heart. So I appreciate that about it as well. Now here's my, my major complaint about it, about this series, is that it didn't have a real throughput storyline. It really was very much, kind, it was kind of like, it reminded me Kung kind Fu. of like, yeah, like um, Kung Fu or, you know, it's 1970s TV show. Like Gunsmoke or something. Yeah, or like even The Hulk, you know, where everyone, it was like, you know, he's just traveling and- Batty you know, of the Week, yeah, I was yeah. okay with that. Yeah, was, but that was very deliberate, yeah, and I was okay yeah. with it too. You know, it, it, it is kind of, it, that's the thing, it doesn't take itself that seriously. It, and it's fun, it's kind of a throwback to like the Westerns of the 50s yeah, or 60s right. or 70s. It, you know what I mean? It has that vibe. It's totally going for that retro vibe. Yeah, right. I, I, that's and part of the charm. I think you're right. I'm and there was enough of a plot that they they brought yeah. together towards the end. So yes. That, so that our, a modern audience is like, yeah, you got to give me some arcs here. Yep. You know. So I don't feel like every episode ends where it begins. Yes. Right. Exactly. And it was a good good balance. Mm-hmm. Good balance. The, the season finale. I mean. Yeah. It got was serious, man. Fantastic. Yeah. And there's so yeah. many levels. There is a wow. There's some real legit Star, Force came back. Star Wars story, you know, plot behind that lightsaber. 
which I just found out about because Ian and I were talking about it before oh, yeah. the show. That lightsaber's got history. Yeah, it's not and, a lightsaber. No, well, yeah, it's something else. But it, it yeah, it's like again, a dark blade. It's a dark blade. blade. It's a Mandalorian blade. That, yeah. That's the blade that's held by the leader of the Mandalorian. Yes, you would know that if you watched Star Wars Rebels. Yes, yes. So that's where that. Comes so in yeah, there were there were lots of people watching that last episode when he came out of that ship with that blade. They were like, "Holy crap! Yep. This is." Beyond epic, yeah, and we and it was totally you know went over our heads. It not still mine. looked awesome. But why? But but why is it epic? Stage. Well, now I know. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, but the point is, it's all because it's inside the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Like it shows the quality of the writing. And I, man, you know, now that we're talking about it like this, I really am appreciating the show even more because I I, I did want a little more meat on the bones. But what you know, also, so what? Yeah. Next season, enjoy it. Out. Yeah, yeah, like I love the uh, just the. Being in the Star Wars ambiance, you know, I like being inside the universe and being able to see little details. Yeah. Hey, the special effects are there. Oh my God, yeah. They're not they're overdoing fantastic. it. And they're doing a lot of practical effects, yeah. which is a good choice. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and the other cool thing about it is that the stormtroopers are kind of deadly and scary. Yeah. And that's, oh, I love the scene, oh though. Oh my God. The, the scout one of the best. Yeah, it was one of the, awesome. yeah, the two. So clearly, the, the empires fell. Whatever discipline that they had has really fallen away. And so you have these two old. You know, uh, stormtroopers. Tro- they were scout troopers, troopers yeah. and they're they're t- each taking pot shots at a can like twenty feet away, and they can't hit it for it's, shit. Yeah. They and keep it, missing it. And again, it's like one of those little Easter eggs because it's right. a running joke yeah. that they're terrible shots. And the, the before the shooting scene, which was a yeah. beautiful uh, capper to that to their scene, they're just having this inane banter about yeah. about stuff going on, and it was this very realistic. Yeah. And you were totally in that moment with them, and it was very. I just loved it. That we were laughing our asses off, and then the shooting, which of course was the icing on the cake. Yeah, the whole so scene. what's brilliant about that is that you know stormtroopers are drones, right? They are nameless, literally faceless, you know, drones that could be killed at right. uh, at will. Um, making them people, yeah, you know, is like it, it, it's both weird and exciting and interesting at the same time, right? It's a brilliant choice. Yeah. You make them, oh, it's that's actually an actual person yeah. in that generic stormtrooper or scout yeah, trooper sure. outfit. And so it, it, com- it just gives us a co- you know totally different view, a different perspective on what's going yeah, it's on. It's an inspired scene. I loved it. So loved it. clearly we loved you know, the Mandalorian. There's a lot of quality on many levels in mm-hmm. this series. They hit it out of the park. And we want more. You know, we want more of the Mandalorian, and, and we more want shows more like shows it. like the yeah. Mandalorian. And more egg and baby Yoda, please. Yeah, we don't need rehashing of the same plot lines nope. over and over again. You have a massive, you know, universe with lots of depth, oh. lots of color. Just have fun in it, you know. And that Mandalorian armor, man. Yeah, like that. Hit, when I he love hits, how he's incrementing it throughout. Yeah. The, yes, the that season. was such it's a like good idea. In a, in a video game, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah, more, more, you know, more. You know, more unlocked. armor, cooler yeah. armor. What else could it do? And hit some of the his gun, his rifle. Hello, the one that just disintegrates. Oh my God, creature! That thing. That's when. That is. Remember when Darth Vader turned to Boba Fett and said, "No disintegrations." Mm-hmm. That's what he was talking about. Because mm. you're right. right. You're right. <laughs> and Bob, it is the way. It is the way. We'll see you guys next week. Hey. Why not become a patron and help us continue doing this show? Why don't you tell people about the show? Why don't you make a TV show like The Mandalorian and send it to us? Because I want to watch it.